asked for a lot. So it's been quite difficult, I have to say. I've looked at hundreds of pictures of sloths, trying to find one that we can put into some kind of format to do as a watercolour painting. I think you're going to like this. Let's get drawing. to do a sloth. This isn't something I'd imagined doing but we have been asked for so many of these so I have played around until I've found an easy way to draw a sloth so stick with me here. Go about halfway up the page. I'm doing mine on watercolour paper because I'm going to paint mine so if you've got watercolour paper give it a go because we've got some interesting paint techniques we're going to try with this. So I'm going to start like that. I'm going to take my line up to about there so I want this is this is my branch. This is not a linear sloth, it's a branch and my sloth is going to hang from the branch. So there's my branch there. And then come in about a quarter of the way here and I just want you to do a pretty much straight line coming down there. And then curve it in a bit at the bottom. Come in again there and we're going to put something, this is going to be his, his little paw here over the top. Leave a little gap just over about a centimetre and then another one. And then I want you to go to the bottom of the page about a third of the way in there. And we are going to take a line up to there. That is our first step. How simple is this? So this is going to be an easy peasy first step. So you get those first few lines in and then we'll come back to the ne next stage. Take these basic lines here and we're going to start up here with this leg I want to take it across and so that it's just going over like that this is its, its little back leg and then coming down to there so then I'm going to take my rubber and just rub out those two tree lines so you can see that's the back leg holding on okay little negative shape here remember we've talked about these a lot what I want is a triangle there and that's going to be between those two a triangle so get that in and then come down slightly as if we've got, we're going to take that line there and join that line there come down slightly and then this is the negative shape I want you to think of between the branch and here coming up slightly I'm going to take it right out beyond this line here and then this is where we're going to start to curve it down so you take it to the line and I just want you to curve it slightly and then come in to join there. And we'll again rub those lines out and you can rub that line out too. And that is our outline of a sloth. And then we'll come just to finish it off on the next one. Take this down now and I'm just going to nice and loosely like that for that side of the arm and then here for this one coming in and a little shoulder there and then all we need to do to finish it off is pop in the eyes and the nose and the mouth so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put the we've got these two the, this is very cute around the eyes isn't it is, I think this is why we've possibly had so many requests because the cuteness and then two little lines there for the nose and then his little mouth smile there and around those eyes I want to just put little broken lines there like that and if you feel like it needs it you could bring that down slightly there as well and that coming in here a little bit there and then taking it out that is our slow's drawing this is all going to be all about the painting though. So stick with us and we're going to show you some new techniques. I'm going to start by, you can see here on my picture, here's one I've already done, that I'm going to do a background here in, and I wanted it to look like sort of bits of sky and leaf like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix two washes there. I want to put that so you can see it on my tester paper underneath. 
just two plain washes. Now I've got two jars here because I'm going to mix this wash here, quite a pale blue, and I'm going to clean my brush in that one. You'll see why in a second. And then I'm going to, I want a green one. I'm going to have to use more paint to get the brightness of this sort of sap green that I want here. Wash my brush there. And then I want to make sure that my water's clean and I'm going to go over the whole background with water. Now, the only reason I can do this is because I'm using watercolour paper. If you were using, if I, at this point, if I was using ordinary paper and I put this much water on it, it will, the whole paper would just buckle and maybe even rip. Um, so when you're using watercolour paints, it isn't just about the paint, it really is about the paper. So if you're doing this and you've got one of our watercolour pads, this absolutely will work because that's got exactly the strength of paper that we use. And um, this paper, you can get lots of different types of watercolour paper. We use a really thick one, this one, which is it's called, the technical term is 350 GSM. It's really strong and it doesn't need stretching. So that's why we use this one. But you can order that from our website. So I've wet that whole background. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in some blue and I'm just going to watch the effect of it. I just want bits of it here like that. So I see how it just spreads. I'm not controlling it at all. I'm just dropping, I'm dropping bits of the blue into the water. I'm going to clean my brush now and I'm going to do exactly the same with the green. Just drop it and it will meet and it'll do crazy things. And no painting will be the same because, because the, the green is, you can't control it. We're not controlling the way the paint flows. It means we can have this great effect. I love painting like this in this way. I think it's so much fun. I like the unpredictability of it. I'm going to take it right to the edge now here. So I've mixed them slightly. If I clean my brush, I want it to put some blue in at the edge. There, if I'm just dropping it and I'm letting it all roll out and it'll just meet each other. Let's put a little bit there. Just finishing it off with this blue. So I'm not really bothered about having any white bits. You could leave some white bits shining through, but... There we go. I'll just let it... If any bits where it's not joined, I'm just jo touching my brush to it to let the paint join and I'll take it right to the edge there. And I'm going to leave that to dry. It'll probably take five minutes or so because there's loads of water on it, but I'll let that dry. Okay, I'm, I've, so I've demonstrated there a, a, a method of, of dropping wet into wet watercolour. And now I'm going to do his fur and the tree using my watercolour pencils. So I've got a selection of browns here um, and one of them is very dark. Um, if you don't have that, don't worry. Um, I've got the black, a brown, a yellow ochre and a grey, which is the key. And I'm going to start with my darkest bits here. And I'm going to go in around the edge and I'm going to put in a fair bit of black here because I want these bits, these bits to be the darkest bits, a bit around the eyes as well. Under the chin and here. I'd like that to be very dark. And there. So this is me sort of putting in my, in, in, in the bits where I will, I want them to be really quite dark. And up here. And and the top of that one as well. And then here. I'm going to come down there and then we we'll put plenty of black in there. Now I'm going to go in with my brown and I'm going to go around the eyes. And there and then down the center. And you can see I'm not being particularly neat about this. All of this is going to go into a watercolour wash here. So we'll go with the brown there. And if I take my yellow ochre, these just, this is just to really bring some warmth into it and lightness as if the light's shining on his fur there. I'm going to put a bit on his face as well and a bit here. And then I think the some tiny bits of dark brown I'm going to go for. I'm going to put those, that's the same brown as I was using earlier, 
going to put those in there, some just bits where it's where it's slightly darker brown, and then anything in between here, I am going to fill with my grey. I'm going to go around the edges with the grey there in here. So does not look particularly sloth like at the moment. I think we can all agree to that. Um, Go there with that one, go with the black on that one. Right, now let's bring it, now let's, now let's get the magic going. So I'm going to start here by turning the, um, the lightest colour to paint, the yellow ochre. Now if I, if I turn a darker colour and it goes in it, that will be the most dominant. So I want all the yellow ochre first, I'm going to go for all of that first. And then I'll start to bring in the brown around it. Can you see? And what I want it to do, these washes, is have them so that it's really quite subtle to get the different coloured fur. See, that one's very dark. I'll just be quite careful that it doesn't overpower the yellow ochre next to it. And I'm just moving it around the paint, picking up the pigment and turning all these marks into watercolour paint marks instead of pencil marks. There we go. I'm going to clean my brush again now. And I'm going to start turning the grey here. And the grey will mix in with the brown. Can you see? Coming up. And that's the effect I want to go for, this kind of mottled fur coming round. Start turning this grey here. And you can see the more I'm going in with my brush, the more it's turning. But as soon as it goes into the black, then that black will dominate because it's the darkest of the colours. So there we go. If I go into that, I don't want bits of it to come in. I'm going to get it as if it's shadowing. Let's do the same up here. I've left his face to last on purpose. See, it's starting to dry already. If I come in and again, I'm going to go, I'm going to change the brown, then the greys, and then the blacks, and let them all start to work in together. So when you're using watercolour pencils, you can use them by layering them like this. You're creating the washes on the paper. And then I'm going to let this dry before I come in and put in the details around the eyes. And while that's doing that, here we go. I'm going to... I don't really want it to look like there's any link to big lines, but you can see I'm moving the paint around. And then I'm going to take my dark brown. You can see I had a little accident with the wash when it was drying. I was trying to speed things up with a bit of kitchen roll. It didn't quite work, but we should be able to go over that. And I'm going to put a bit of the brown in. So every time I do this, what I'm doing is I'm putting the pigment from the inside the pencils onto my paper. So that's just turning the branch. And then if I come back, even though it's slightly wet, that's fine because what I want to do is I'm taking my black around. And while it's still wet, it actually is softening this line. And I'm just going around the edges of everything to make him stand out a little bit. Like that. And then I'm going to finish his once he's got his head in, I'm going to finish with the eye details. First thing I'm going to do is put in a little highlight. So I want to put that in first. And then this broken line around the eyes. Same here. Make sure I've got the highlight. Broken line around the eyes. And then the nose is these two sort of dots, little dots like that. And then going around. And then we'll finish him off with his quirky little sloth-like smile and that's him finished <music>
enjoyed that sloth as much as Elizabeth and I did. Um, and uh, if you uh, were one of the people who's asked for pandas or even giraffes, have a look at the junior one because we've got pandas and giraffes in that one today. We've got loads planned for this week. So um, make sure you send us the pic your pictures of your sloths and tune in tomorrow for more day draw. Mm -hmm.